Hi folks, today we're reviewing Tales from the Loop, just in time for the new series. Tales from the Loop is a TTRPG system put out by Modifius, and it's a lot of fun. It's been out for a little while now, and overall you are role-playing the 80s that never was. So it's set in the 1980s, but we have things like flying cars and automatons and... Dinosaurs! <laughs> dinosaurs and fission reactors and all kinds of stuff. So it's a parallel reality based off of some really gorgeous artwork. Mm -hmm. And um, actually the artwork was the inspiration for writing yeah. the RPG to begin with. Yeah, um, and I, I like the amount of artwork that's in the book. It really provides nice visuals, inspiration for the world, mm -hmm. um, especially if you have people that are more like visual learners. Yeah. It's great to have that. I know like the GM screen is gorgeous and yeah. all of that. It very much sets the mood and sets the world that you'll be playing in. All right, so our review of Tales from the Loop is we absolutely love it and we mm -hmm. think that you should play it. You can come into this year's Gen Con and play it from me and go and buy the book. So thanks for watching this episode of... <laughs> Just kidding. We're going to go All right. a little yeah, bit more deeper. <laughs> absolutely. Okay, so, so in general, our review, and then we're going to talk about some of the things that we like a lot about mm -hmm. the game. Um, this isn't going to teach you how to play by any means, but some of the stuff that stands out that we enjoy. First of all, the your kids. Like, mm -hmm. that's important to understand. This is a... I would consider it a GM light game. Okay. Um, the GM is definitely there. They're the storyteller. They're helping to run things. But I have found that this game works best when you have a GM that's very, very prepared and does as little as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very much like you can very easily let your players mm -hmm. run things and occasionally kind of throw in a little like, okay, we're going to go do this thing now. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one of the first games that I ran for a home game that Dawn was a part of, I acted a little bit as like the narrator or something mm -hmm. like that uh, as far as what was going on. But then I had a game that I ran at Gen Con where essentially all I did was I shifted the camera to a new scene. Yeah, and I think that's another thing I really like is that it sets up, you tell all the story and the gameplay is in these scenes. Mm -hmm. um, so we were discussing it earlier and Ryan, you put it a really good way. Yeah, for me, Dungeons and Dragons and games like that kind of feel like we are playing out the events of a novel like Tolkien or Rothfuss or something like mm -hmm. that. For me, Tales from, Tales from the Loop feels very much like episodic television mm -hmm. uh, or something that you would stream where you bounce from scene to scene and sometimes they're not even linear yeah they don't have to be this is what's going on here okay and then we have to go over here to what's happening at the exact same moment it's really nice for that narrative storytelling and it's also really useful because this game is i would say 90 95 percent role play yeah as opposed to dice mechanic and also the nice thing with the scenes is it lends itself very well to if you have one player or a couple players who maybe aren't as engaged use the gm can kind of introduce a new scene that is geared for that character whether it includes everybody or we had a couple of scenes in our first game that only were one character mm. scenes. So if you have a really intense, heavy scene and maybe they need a little bit of break, you could jump over to another character and do a scene with them or two other characters around the table. Yeah, overall, that's what I'm talking about there. Mm -hmm. It's set up with different scenes as opposed to one continuous narrative storyline um, of all of these events. And that's something that I think that the game does very well. And the 80s theme even runs into character creation oh, yeah. um, because you're picking archetypes, which are very, very much like if you've seen any John Hughes movies. Yeah, um, absolutely. It's, it's the, you've got like the jock and the weirdo. And, and the rocker and the popular mm -hmm. kid. Absolutely. And then um, I also like that they ask you to write down your character's favorite 80s song. Yeah. Um, it's just a nice little cool quirk added in there and it's it's fun because i know a lot of people have ended up putting together a playlist of all of the characters yeah favorite songs in that playlist so like we're going to a scene with your character well 
go ahead and play that song. Yeah, it's really neat. And character creation is nice because you do pick that character type. Um, and then while you fill it out, there's a lot of really nice touchstones that you fill out. Yes, you do pick skills and things like that, but everything in character creation and everything throughout the game is geared towards this idea of telling the story and telling through the, telling the story through the eyes of children. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't mean that like as a diminutive term. All of your characters are between 9 and 15 years old. And even as teenagers, this is something that I think is important to remember as a GM and as a player and as a quirk of this game. You need to remember that you're kids. Mm -hmm. And um, that the world was a little bit more fantastical when we were teenagers um, and when we were kids and there was more awe and wonder and there was maybe more danger and stuff like that. And kids sometimes make logic leaps that don't really make sense. But if we just go with that and we yes and the story, it works really well. Mm -hmm. I don't know that Tales from the Loop is what I would call a, a good game for brand new RPG players. Now, if you're new to RPGs or you want to introduce somebody, I think it would work, yes. But I think it's a great game for if you've got a friend or someone like that who they've played D&D &D and they maybe they played Shadowrun, they played Pathfinder, and that's not really working for them, but they want to join in, I think this would be really great because it's all about storytelling and the crunch and the mechanics don't get in the way of that story yeah if you're looking if you really enjoy building your character and the crunch of the game this is not yeah. really the game for you but if you enjoy the, the role play aspect yeah totally this is definitely very heavy and and that's not to say like if you love building your characters and picking your feats and all of that that you'll hate this game it's just it's going to be a very different game mm -hmm. because you're just kids you are absolutely normal kids. Yes, there's dinosaurs outside, and yes, you might ride a sentient hover bus to school, but one of the underpinnings of the game is that that stuff's boring. Yeah. Everyday life, life is boring, mm -hmm. and you're just kids. No one's a hero. No one has feats. Mm -hmm. No one has special bonus actions. Uh, the coolest thing that one of my characters had... Uh, the last time we played was they had a light up toy lightsaber and it was just a toy it wasn't mm -hmm. magical and it was that made it even better yeah yeah i think and it's the going back and using your imagination of like putting yourself in what was i like as a kid or what, yeah. what were other kids like that's a really fun aspect it also lends itself to, can lend itself to, dealing with some pretty heavy topics. Yeah. Uh, because you mm -hmm. establish, um, like, your character's fear and their trouble. Health, trouble. Yes. Yeah. And I think that this would be a good chance to, um, you know, understand with all of your players that if you have a character that their biggest fear or their problem is that they have a really physically abusive mother, that's their character, um then just make sure that everybody's having the conversation. Uh, maybe check out our video on lines and veils mm -hmm. because I can tell you for me as a GM, I would not be comfortable and I wouldn't subject myself mentally to 20 minutes of role play of having to be that abusive parent. And if anybody in my group wasn't okay with it, even though it wasn't their character, I wouldn't want to let that be in the game. But you know, you could do something of going home and saying it's a really rough night with your mom and then the next day saying yeah you notice a couple of extra bruises on alice's arm mm -hmm. there it is it's in there maybe your the player really wants it and you know those things do happen mm -hmm. um but just because that really heavy stuff is potentially there doesn't mean anybody needs to be putting themselves in an uncomfortable or unsafe headspace just to play the game yeah and i think in some ways the game kind of uh one of the core kind of principles to keep in mind is that kids can get hurt they can get injured but they can't die yeah in this game kids don't die mm -hmm. they get injured they get scared they get taken out of the storyline for a little bit they're still there but they can't mm -hmm. contribute yeah and that's fine also remember sometimes maybe as a kid your biggest problem is nobody understands me 
Yeah, it can it can be it can be definitely be a lighter game uh, depending on your group and how everybody wants to play. Yeah. Now with the um, injury mechanic, that's one thing that I found could um, I didn't have problems with this, yeah. but I know some people could um, struggle maybe a little bit with this mechanic because in order to heal yourself, you well you can have someone else in the party make you feel better and mm-hmm. that's done through role play or you can go and talk to the 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 adult that you go to as a confidant like mm-hmm. a biology teacher or your grandmother um but again it's all about the role play yeah so that you're not just going there and being like i heal mm-hmm. but instead and, yeah and i think depending on your group um that could be a, a potential confusion on like well how much do i need to do to consider myself healed um, and I think that's yeah. one of those situations where maybe go a little light on the mechanics of that necessarily and lean into the role play. And, and that's what I think you really need to do for this one. Something I like about it that it offers you is the option to play. So the loop is um, a part of the story. It's like a big uh, super fusion generator. Um, The game primarily takes place in Sweden, but there are options for the U.S. loop. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that that's neat because you can play the U.S. loop, like, and for me as an American player, uh, maybe that feels a little bit more familiar and easy to get lost in the nostalgia. But the Swedish loop, I know you guys were saying it was easier to be like... It was fun because uh, I don't know much about Sweden, especially Sweden in the 80s. So there were certain points where I could just kind of let go, like, well, this was the 80s, I remember, but sure, we'll just go with that this is how it worked in this 80s. Yeah. Um, so I was able to let go of some of my own knowledge of the time when it didn't quite line up with what we wanted to, the game to be. And one tip that I'll give all of the GMs and probably some of the players that are out there um, yes, it's it's got uh, flying cars and clones and aliens and dinosaurs, but you know what? It's the 80s and there isn't the internet and they don't have cell phones because it's what's going to encourage your party to stay together mm-hmm. and that instant communication isn't there. And so they're running around on their bikes trying to solve the mystery of why all of the dogs have gone missing. Mm-hmm. Um you can lean into that 80s vibe pretty well in that way too. So that's what we think of the game Tales from the Loop. Have you played it? Have you always wanted to play it? Are you looking forward to the show that is coming out? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you're going to the 2020 Gen Con and you're really interested in Tales from the Loop, then look out for the game Whatever Happened to Little Sven, I'll be GMing it. And I think I've got three different sessions of it. So who knows? Maybe I'll see you there. A big thanks to our patrons, especially Joan. If you want to support our channel, you can head over to our Patreon page and check out the perks of being a patron. So if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. And until next time, I'm Dawn. And I'm Ryan. And this is Roll for Initiative. Bye. Bye. You found the squeaky chair today. You gave me the squeaky chair. I gave you the squeaky chair.